of the standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. And these letters are going to be important when we write the steps. And today we're going to be learning how to, uh, we're going to be factoring a trinomial, and a trinomial just means that it has three terms. So last class we factored four terms. We're going to use this process today to change the three terms into four terms so we can use what we learned last class. So first we're going to factor out the GCF if possible. Then we're going to multiply a and c. So the number in front of the x squared and the number on the end that doesn't have an x. Then we're going to find the factors of the answer in step two. So whatever answer we get from multiplying that add up to b. So the number that's in front of x. Then we're going to split bx into two terms using the answers that we got in step three. And then finally, we're going to factor by grouping. I know that sounds a little confusing, but I'm going to show you what I mean in the examples. So factor out the GCF if possible. Well, 4, 8, and 3 don't have anything that divides into all of them, and not all the terms have an x, so we don't have a GCF here. So we're going to take a and c, and we're going to multiply them together. So 4 times 3 equals 12. Now I'm going to make a list of things that multiply to give me 12. I could do 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. I want to pick the pair that adds up to 8 because that's my B term. So 2 and 6 add up to 8. So instead of 8x, I'm going to turn it into 2x plus 6x. I'm going to bring down my 4x squared and my 3. And now I'm going to factor by grouping. So group the first two together, group the second two together. These two have 2x in common. So I factor out 2x and I'm left with 2x plus 1. Then uh, 6x and 3 have 3 in common, so I'm going to factor that out. Factor out 3. When I divide, I get 2x plus 1. My matching parenthesis is one of my factors. And my GCFs are my other factor. So let's try another one. I'm going to multiply my a, a, and c. So 4 times negative 5. And that gives me negative 20. So the numbers that multiply to give me 20 would be 1 and 20, 2 and 10, or 4 and 5. Since they multiplied to a negative, I know that one of the numbers in each pair has to be negative. Since my B term is positive, I know the smaller number is going to be the negative here. So it's either negative 1, negative 2, or negative 4. So which pair adds up to 8? It's negative 2 and 10. So I'm going to rewrite 8x as negative 2x plus 10x. Bring down my other terms. And now I can factor by grouping. Group the first two. They have a 2x in common. So 2x times 2x minus 1. My second two terms have a 5 in common. And 
And so matching factor and my GCFs. All right, this one, if we notice, all three terms have x's. So we definitely have a GCF this time. And all three terms are divisible by 7. So I'm going to take out 7x cubed before we start. So I'm at 7x cubed. And I'd be left with x squared minus 5x plus 4. Since I don't need the 7x cubed while I'm doing my grouping, I'm going to ignore that. So I'm going to sort of cover that up, and I'm going to focus on what's left here. So my a would be 1, and my c is 4, so 1 times 4 equals 4. And my factors are either 1 and 4, or 2 and 2. Since it multiplies to a positive, but adds to a negative, I know both terms are negative this time. And which pair adds up to negative 5? That would be negative 1 and negative 4. So I'm going to split this up into negative 1x minus 4x. Bring down my x squared and the plus 4. And now I can group. Group the first two. Group the second two. These both have an x. I'll be left with x minus 1. Anytime this front term is negative, you're almost always going to divide out the negative. So minus 4, negative 4 and negative 4 would be positive 1x, and 4 divided by negative 4 would be minus 1. We also got to remember these parentheses have to match, and if we didn't divide out the negative, they'd have different signs. So my factors would be x minus 1 and x minus 4, but... Because we took out this 7x cubed here, we're going to have to bring it back in and all my other steps. So there, and there, and in front of my final answer. So to review, the standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c, and it always has to equal 0. This is very important, this part right here, for what we're doing today. And that's because of the zero product property, which says if a times b equals 0, then a equals 0 or b equals 0, or both of them can equal 0. So let's look at some examples. We have x plus 13 times x plus 5 equals 0. So what that means is, this: think of this as our a, and this is our b. Either x plus 13 equals 0, or x plus 5 equals 0. Well, now that we have these two small equations, we can solve for x. So subtract 13, subtract 13. Either x equals negative 13, or if we subtract 5, subtract 5, x equals negative 5. So this one was nice and gave us the two things being multiplied together to start. In other cases, we're not, and we need to get those factors first. So we're going to use what we used last class for factoring. So we're going to multiply a and c. 3 times 2 equals 6. Factors of 6 are 1 and 6, or 2 and 3. Since we multiplied to a positive and we want to add to a negative, both terms will be negative. Which pair adds up to negative 5. That's negative 2 and negative 3. So negative 
2x minus 3x. Bring down my 3x squared. Bring down the plus 2. And I'll bring down the 0 in a little while. Let's worry about our factoring first. So group the first two, group the second two. These two both have an x in common. This would be x times 3x minus 2. Since my first number is negative, I know I'm going to divide by a negative, and they don't have anything else in common, so I'll divide by a negative 1. So minus 1 times negative 3 divided by a negative 1 would be positive 3x, and positive 2 divided by negative 1 would be negative 2. So my factors are 3x minus 2 and x minus 1. Now I'm going to bring down my equals 0 to all my steps. It's just easier to do it afterwards so it doesn't get in the way. Now I have two things being multiplied that equal 0, so I'm going to split them up. 3x minus 2 equals 0 and x one minus 1 equals 0. So to solve here I'll add 2 to both sides. 3x equals 2, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 2 thirds. Here I just have to add 1, add 1, so x equals 1. So now I'm going to kind of combine everything we've done with factoring. So the first thing, looking back to what we said at the beginning, it has to equal 0 to start. This does not equal 0. So what I'm going to do to make it 0 is I'm going to subtract everything that's on this side. I'm going to subtract it from its like terms. So that'll cancel and that'll cancel. 3d cubed minus 2d cubed would be 1d cubed. Bring down the minus 3d squared. Negative 8d and negative 2d would be minus 10d equals 0. Now if you notice, all three terms have a d. So I'm going to factor out d. So we have d times d squared minus 3d minus 10 equals 0. So that I can factor what's inside, I'm going to ignore the GCF that's out front and just focus on what's in the parentheses. So 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. Factors of 10 are 1 and 10, or 2 and 5. Multiplies to a negative, we need one of each we need one number in each pair to be negative. Since this is negative, we know it's the bigger numbers. So which pair adds up to negative 3? That's this pair. So I'm going to split negative 3d into 2d minus 5d. And bring down my other terms, d squared minus 10. So now let's group. Group the first two, group the second two. So these both have a d in common. So d times d plus 2. Both of these have a negative 5 in common. Take out the negative 5 times d plus 2. So my factors are d plus 2 and d minus 5. Five. But I also have to go back and then bring down my GCF of D and the equal zero. So now each of these three terms could equal zero. So D could equal zero, D plus two could equal zero or d minus 5 could equal 0. Here if I add 5, I get d equals 5. Here I would subtract 2. d would equal negative 2. Or d equals 0, that one's already solved.
That's all for today. Fill in your summary and I'll see you in class.